Our next speaker is Catherine Barrett, and Catherine is a development officer with BIM. She was BIM lead on the Seafood EMS development program and identified pathways to work with the fishing industry on industry-based solution. Catherine is currently the Northeast Flag Facilitator, which provides grant aid towards the sustainable development of fishery-dependent areas in defined coastal areas of Louth, Meath and Dublin. So Catherine is going to be speaking to us a little bit today about fishing for litter and the Marlet project. And Catherine is from Bordy Skiwara. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. So, uh, so basically, I suppose this element of this fishing for litter, which some of the speakers spoke about this morning. So, what is Marlet? So Marlet was a it's an it's a EU it's an EU funded project. And basically, uh, the European Commission under DG Environment decided that um, some areas around Europe weren't participating in marine fishing for litter and coming back to, um, as Richard outlined, some of these regional action plans. So they set up a programme um, to actually ha nearly work as an outreach to some of the member states. Uh, and this is delivered by this, um, by this, I suppose, an environmental consultant group and a lot of partners. Uh, which aims to identify the good practices for removing uh, both litter and derelict fishing gear and to establish marine projects um, in, in, in the four regional seas, so complementing some, some, some of the topics that Richard brought up. So we applied as a host partner and we also identified local partners that could work with us. So we had a read, so they, they, and again as these, as these projects go, we had a European network first and then we had a regional one, i.e. in the member state. So we had our fishery harbours, we had a council pier, uh, which is managed by the county council, uh, and we had the environmental unit, we had industry in terms of responsible Irish fish, we had our own um, Department of Agriculture, and Richard was there from the Department of Environment, as well as some of our scientific colleagues from the Marine Institute. So setting the scene, so I think Richard has covered the MSFD, um, and I'm going to just go through some of these things, uh, some of these other points. So in terms of um, what the, it's the Irish Ground Fish Survey, which is run by the Marine Institute. So it's done in a scientific manner um, and it, it, it contributes into ICES and to OSPAR. Some of the information, so it would be, I suppose, um, evidence and scientifically based information. Uh, so basically here, as you can see, you have the proportions of litter, uh, of litter that was collected on these surveys based over a number of years. And uh, the colour is actually wrong. The, the pink should be grey. But you can see where the grey is, is off the west coast. But obviously there's a, uh, there's, there's a lot more that, of, these pla of plastics that came up in this ground fish survey um, you know, off, the, off, the off the south coast. So some of the results you can see that it was fishing related. And then there's also non-fishing related uh, material that came up in their surveys. So I suppose the main topic, the main objective of these surveys is to look at, um, I suppose, juveniles and the health of the stocks. However, they added this extra layer in while they were studying, so they collected um, another layer of scientific data while they were there. So here you can see, so some of these areas, um, now in terms of like, um, uh, Richard actually mentioned, you know, the, the ICs. So basically there's, there's, there's various ICs divisions. So the whole of the, of the ocean is, is, is done up in rectangles. And rather than calling them uh, names, they give them numbers. So for instance, this one here, 7B, is actually off Rockall and Rockall Trough, which is on the far west, uh, far northwest. Then the next one, uh, 7G, is the Celtic Sea. So that's actually down from kind of, um, I suppose, um, Kinsale over to, to Waterford, uh, a little bit to Wexford. 7G then, 7J, sorry, is southwest, so from Kerry and along and, 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 and out down to the south. And then, the, uh, and then uh, 6A is north, North Ireland, up along to the east coast of Scotland. So you can see, so through these surveys, um, this is the type of, uh, of average waste that they were getting in the halls. Um, so again, you can see that um, some, of the, some of the material coming up in the trawls um, wasn't necessarily huge amounts. Uh, so then we were also undertaking uh, gear trials for another particular body of work. Uh, so we said as part for Marlit that we would actually participate and actually 
Trya Fishing for Litter um, uh, that would run in parallel to the main um, uh, fishing operation. So for instance, a particular gear type uh, and six trips were done and these trips were between 20 to 31 hour tows. So for instance, it was done off the west coast and about, so you can see that the, you know, I suppose just to give it context before we looked into the bag, that was the one ton bag and this is at the bottom of the bag. Um, so about 20 kilos um, was, was, was collected over those 30 tows. Um, and again, it, it kind of, uh, it underpinned as well what, what the Marine Institute was finding. Now, these are, this is another particular type of gear uh, trial. For instance, um, this is what we call deep net, and it was actually a gear retrieval. We were fishing for gear as opposed to fishing for fish. And uh, as you can see there, so this is a, this is a the, you know, the focus was the gear, was, was finding gear. Fishmen were reporting that, you know, that they were getting, that sometimes they were finding gear that was abandoned. Um, and it's a type of gear that isn't actually utilized by the Irish industry. Um, but yet it was, on, um, it was on grounds that the industry were using. So basically what we did is, you know, you can see the two men working on the deck, you know, to, to, to utilize or to strip down the gear to make it manageable. It has to be stripped off the head rope, off the foot rope. You know, it's not as easy as gathering the net and putting it into recycling because of the different materials. Um, so you can see the guy on the far, way, on the, on the far, far side there, again, unpicking it so that it can actually be in, um, in, in, in its different components. Just like at home in your green bin, you've got your plastics, you know, and you've got your compost. More or less the same thing, different streams. Um, but as you can see, the impact in terms of this ghost net fishing, or ghost fishing as, as the term would be, has a, has a large impact on crustacean. Uh, a lot of that was spider crab and brown crab, and brown crab would be one of our key, uh, would be a, our most valuable um, uh, crustacean to the industry. So between that type, between that particular project, and also when the salmon retired, when the salmon fishery was closed, uh, we had a kind of, um, I suppose, um, you know, offer up your gear uh, type of thing. So uh, we actually uh, began to, we, we began. This is stripped gear again, as you can see, and it's mainly nylon. I was bailed. We actually set it up in the unit in Tremor, which I am the Minister of State might have been, might have liked to have heard. And between, uh, between that, uh, and over the last six years, working both on the gear retrieval and then this handling of the gear, we have uh, possibly uh, close to about 75 um, tonnes of nylon and about eight tonnes of polyethylene have been hand stripped, handled, and put into um, recycling um, streams. So close to about a half million kilos of gillnet was taken out of the marine environment and also out of landfill um, into, into programs. Uh, so other strands that we're, that we're kind of working on, we have an environmental management system, which is our entry level for certification. So it's a method of auditing vessels and we've developed it with fishermen, far fishermen. Um, and our key partner in that was Responsible Irish Fish, who should have been given the presentation today, by the way. Um, and we have, um, you know, they have a membership of about 120. About 80 of those um, are actually in, are nearly in, are they in or being re are, are recertified to either BIM or else the MSC uh, fishery certification. But in total, uh, like that would be an average, the average size of those boats would be about maybe, you know, 25 metres. But we have everything from five metre boats to 44 metre boats. And on the register, um, there's, there's about just over about 2,000 vessels. Um, however, some of them are very, very small and inshore. Our majority of our, I think, of our, of our inshore fleet is about 1,800 vessels, uh, which are, which are you know, which is a lot, um, but they're the smallest section, smallest size boats. So just a little quick overview of this. So basically it's based on the ISO 14000 principle and we looked at broken down the aspects and you can, as you can see, um, so each fisherman does his risk assessment and we've got a guidance note on what type of things that they should look for that could be a risk in terms of under these. So they, they've kind of got, um, I suppose, hints and tips of, of what they should look for. So as you can see under number seven there is their own waste management. Um, as well then as number eight, which is marine uh, debris and litter. So they look at, so certain vessels, um, you know, would, would identify their own waste management, what they should do, and also 
um, you know, uh, what to do for marine litter or debris. And under this, when we started this program, uh, the fish were very keen to take part in a fishing for litter program, but it was a little bit difficult to to um, to set up. So just a little comment on our industry partner. So um, due to their work on the EMS and getting it out to vessels, uh, because they were key in terms of this industry to industry membership or uh, mentoring to, 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 to empower themselves, uh, they were shortlisted for the Green Awards in 2011. And also Seaweb, which a lot of you probably know about, he was nominated as a, as a seafood champion, uh, in a, which is an international award. Uh, so this is just a snapshot of this Marlet uh, program and um, our, our, um, our workshop has been uh, detailed on that and, and that's, that's, a, that's available on the web. Uh, so we had visiting experts, so we had um, the milieu consultant who has a degree in environmental law and uh, our other, other guy is Tom Piper who is from Chemo UK. So he oversees, um, uh, I suppose I think he said about maybe 45 ports um, in the UK who participate in fishing for litter, um, um, even though he would be working close, more closely with the ones in Scotland. But he also would have a very, um, I suppose, leading hand in those in the southwest. And we were off down to Castown Bear on our site visit. And as you can see, I suppose I just captured that this wild Atlantic way and, and, and tourism and the increase in tourism on the coast, um, you know, it, it, is, it, is important. it is important. So we had pre Movember here with Richard uh, without, the, without the beard. And uh, so we, you know, we had 16 participants. We also went down to Castown Bear and had another bit of a workshop. Um, you know, he showed us, you know, what happens to the galley waste, what happens to some of the, the fishing gear that we now have a program with for nylon. And then, you know, you know, it looks like a mess, but it's actually organized chaos in terms of material that um, has been, um, um, I suppose, has been look, put, put down, in, in, which looks in a chaotic way, but it's just that looking for sources or pathways for this type of material is difficult. Um, so he has a, a fairy, a fairy, uh, various heaps and mounds of material um, that are in the process of being recycled, are being treated further, or is look, are currently looking for um, of ways to, to handle uh, and treat this. So what are the next steps? They also are putting together, um, you know, I suppose a toolkit um, for, you know, for good practices that are being uh, adopted around Europe and making these available um, online through the website. Um, Marlet Ireland, we're reviewing those and we're, putting, and we're actually inputting into those as well due to the work of the County Council from their environmental unit. Some of their tools are quite important. And then looking at um, the successful bits of the EMS that we were doing ourselves and um, that could be put into the European pot. And we're currently, you know, I suppose, completing that report in how to actually have an industry-based program because, you know, in terms of the, that fishing community, they're key to actually successfully, um, you know, you know, be it, you know, being empowered to do it, and also the endurance that it's just that it is something that will continue, um, as they as we go along, and uh, so basically what we're doing now is putting together, I suppose, a budget um, and a proposal to look, you know, to to see how and where would we be able to support a fishing for litter, um, in, and and in its role of addressing that descriptor under the marine strategy framework. And this is just, I suppose, where it's available on the web. And you can see where the other projects are and the workshops and the toolkit. So that will be there uh, going forward. So thank you very much.